So here I've got a Retina 3C, big C, that I've been sent for repair. And the story with this one was that it had been found in a drawer where it had lain for many decades. Um, at first appeared to work, but uh, after a bit more fiddling and playing with it, it appeared not to work. And the owner had a wee investigate and um, has peeled off the leatherette patch from the base and I believe they've been into the top. Now the advanced lever is sticking out at a funny angle which is never a good sign. And I'm going to investigate this now, see if I can see what's gone on. The rewind knob's very loose, I think that's been removed. I can see someone's had that screw out of there because that's a bit scarred up. And it's loose. I didn't have to go and find my... Use my screwdriver, I could just lift that off. We'll just dive fairly straight into this I think and see if we can find out what's going on. Two screws on the top cover it under the rewind knob. Not as pretty as I'd like to see them. I noticed that the accessory shoe has been thumped in. You can possibly see that that arm is pushed right down. So the camera's been dropped on its head at some stage. Single screw at this end. Hold my finger on the meter. Lift the cover off. I'm looking at the meter, seeing how it's held in. It's just sitting in there little tab at the end here clips under the strap lug and there should be a corresponding rubber pad inside the top cover which holds holds the thing down. I'll remove the film release lever and its spring and I'm looking here at the position of the cocking rack obviously that's sitting possibly even back from its normal start position. This screw and this screw are not the originals. I don't know where they've come from. Um, certainly someone's replaced those at some stage with something else. The advanced lever is certainly sitting in the wrong position. So I'm going to flip it over, remove the advanced lever it's sitting in the wrong position relative to that cocking rack and I want to see if the cocking rack is sitting in the wrong position or whether the advanced lever is sitting in the wrong position. Since I know someone's been in at this end, this is a reasonable place to start. That is not moving in any direction. I'll press down the film release lever. No, it won't press down because the art, the racks, the shaft is not in the correct position. So, right, the cocking rack will have to come out. I know that's the wrong screw, it's the wrong head shape. I think these two screws have been reversed, they have. So the, the correct screws were there, they were in the wrong positions. A shorter screw there I would normally expect to see a second screw at the front. I'll lift that rack out. Alright, the film advanced 
just drop back then to its rest position or it looks like the rest position that's the rest position there this gear the teeth on that gear don't look very good they're a little bit sharp I'm going to pop my advance lever back on temporarily. I want to see if it's sitting in the correct position or not. I've got no tension on there to speak of. I think that's the start position. I'm going to have the whole camera down into a thousand pieces anyway, but I'd like to have a start position where I know what's happening. Alright. So the film advance is now in the correct position. The film release here, this piece, doesn't pop up into place at the end of the stroke very well yet you're almost pushing against the post so I suspect that something has been a little bit damaged there um, possibly the advanced shaft has got, been slightly twisted now I'll put the second screw into the advanced lever, it's behaving reason reasonably well. So that part's okay. So the bottom part of the camera is functional. Which points to this having been played with and things being put in the wrong place. Now your chances of getting the shutter correctly timed to the cocking rack are uh, and not good. Normally I would have the shutter out before I would put a cocking rack in and get the cocking rack correctly timed to my film advance and when I was happy that that worked I would push the shutter back in and uh, time it correctly to match the cocking rack and then possibly all will go. So I'm just going to find my tool for removing the shutter and I'll come back and we'll remove the shutter Put the cocking rack back in place and I'm just having a very very brief look at this now and it's ugly the teeth are buggered um, the teeth are torn off um, basically they're damaged in such a fashion that the rack was probably at or near the end of its no it must have been sitting in about that position when the damage occurred, the advance lever kept winding, the shutter end didn't, know, didn't want to move any further, possibly because this had been lifted out, put back in, in the incorrect position. More pressure put on the advance lever and the teeth are extremely distorted. They're not quite stripped off but functionally they're as good as stripped off and the rack would need to go. Anyway I'll be back after I've taken that shutter out. Alright I have the tool. What I'm most interested in at this point, I already know the cocking rack's damaged, but I also think that that may well have be damage that was caused by someone investigating the properties of the camera. So I'm interested in seeing if this cocking rack will move or be made to move. The teeth, as I say, are extremely damaged. I don't think I can get you close enough to see that. It 
Sorry if the lighting is very poor today. That's. Uh, I'll see if I can get close up on that. I'm sure this doesn't show very well. I might get a still shot and add it. These teeth here are very um, damaged at this point. I'm going to try and true them up and put the rack back in. Right. Through the practice of various dark arts, which I can't tell you much more about, I was able to uh, get the cocking rack to function again. And now, my next trick is to put the shutter back into the camera and see if the shutter actually cocks. Yes, we're going to get this shutter release shaft correctly positioned. It's popped out of line. That's better. And the cocking rack is now correctly timed with the film advance. The screws are positioned where they're supposed to be positioned. I can see the camera has been serviced before because I can see deep alignment marks scratched into the focus mount which tells me somebody has had the focus mount apart at some stage. Now I've got to see if I can get this to cock the shutter. And the shutter is cocked but it doesn't release. I can tell the shutter's cocked because I'm able to to press the shutter release tab on the shutter. If the shutter's not cocked, you can't do that. So the shutter's cocked, but the shutter doesn't release. That suggests to me that the problem originally lay with the shutter. I'll just try one other thing. I'll see if we can... Uh, I'll remove that shutter. I want to see if I can manually shift that cocking over and see if it does move any further. Now it's cocked. The shutter does work. Let's try again. Of course this cocking rack's damaged. It may not have enough strength in its damaged teeth to actually move the shutter far enough to cock. We shall see. That didn't cock. Well, it can't be far away though, it's right on the end of that uh, stroke. No, the rack's had it. It won't cock that shutter far enough. The shutter certainly needs to be serviced, but I did get it to fire by manually cocking it. And I think I can say that most likely the reason that the cocking rack struck Assuming that that happens spontaneously without some assistance of someone servicing the camera. I'll just check that that screw is tight. It is. Is this screw here on the post is tight. This one here it's opposite. We'll check that that's tight. 
there seems to be far too too much play between the rack and the gear at this point. It's almost riding over those teeth. In fact, it has been. That's why it's failed to cock. So there's too much play at this point. Anyway, new rack for that once I service it. So, so here we have it. The camera is all back together, fully functional, running nicely. A good example of the Retina 3C camera. How did I get on? Well, it was a straightforward servicing job, and the only thing that I really required was replacing this cocking rack. Now, I tried my best at uh, cleaning this, cleaning this up, trying to effectively understort the teeth but I wasn't good enough. The distortion of the teeth was too uh, too pronounced. I wasn't able to push them back into the correct alignment um, and as a result the rack was unusable. Basically what happened is that because of the shape of the teeth, the teeth were effectively, I suppose you'd say, too far apart so that as the gear pulled the rack forward, engaged on one tooth, it was too big a step over to the next tooth for that to fall in to its, uh, into the V and um, gather up the tooth. So that's uh, an example of a rack that looks functional. Um, at first glance you wouldn't think there was anything particularly wrong with it. It's not until you look under high magnification that you can see a problem, but certainly there is a problem. One of the other things about this rack was this face here at the back. That's where it runs up against the support post, and that's actually curved. It's uh, hollowed out at this point here, which probably not coincidentally is just opposite the damaged teeth. And it may well be that that rack was a, it was a manufacturing fault, that it's for one reason or another that wasn't cut cleanly or machined correctly at that point, leaving effectively the rack not as well supported at this point as it would be further along. Meaning that the rack can push away from the gear and so that the load is taken on the tips of the teeth and the teeth then are liable to be damaged and distorted. So possibly this was the root cause. This un uneven shape at the back here, this hollowing out. Um, I've got no reason to believe that, that that was a wear pattern exactly. The camera is in quite fine shape. Doesn't look to ever have done much work. So I think it's probably down to a, an original manufacturing fault at that point. But that's the only thing I can point to do, causing the problem. Uh, the shutter itself required servicing, but it was by no means the worst example I'd seen. It's been serviced previously. If anything, it was uh, quite dry inside. There really wasn't much oil on the blades at all. Um, if anything, I would say that there was insufficient lubricant in the shutter. One point in the shutter um, the main drive cam, as that rotates, as you cock the shutter, it pulls across the front face of the lever on the retard gear train. And if that's absolutely dry, if there's no uh, graphite grease or molybdenum or similar on that surface, it is quite like quite a sharp edge that it's been pulled across and it can create a high friction area and that certainly does load up the cocking rack loads up the whole action as that friction is uh, the load of that friction is transmitted right for it back to the film advance so there we have it a nice camera ready to go back to its owner and uh, a cocking rack which looks like it should be good but isn't thanks for watching